Trung thu nhiều quà hay, Tiki giao hàng ngay. Oh, hey, well, I guess it's time to start another episode of IELTS Space Off. Was just admiring this tumbler because we don't use plastic bottles here on set. So, one of my favorite parts about every episode is the beginning because that's when I get to know who our guest is via clues or what type of person. So I think this is the first clue. I thought this was Robin Williams, but I don't think so. I think this is probably Phil Collins, a singer, songwriter, producer. This is the woods. So what's, what are singers doing in the woods? Okay, Mariah Carey, who looks a bit like Celine Dion, and Westlife. Oh, okay. Take a look at me now. That's Against All Odds, and that's a song with all of those singers that I just saw. So I think today's guest is somebody who has managed to overcome difficulties and to create something for him or herself. Hmm, okay, I think I'm, I'm quite right here. So let's see who that person is right there. Hello, my full name in Vietnamese is Nguyễn Thị Thuy Dung. I was born and grew up in Xuân Hồng Commune, an underprivileged area in Yishun District, Hating Province. When I was a little child, I dreamt of becoming a teacher of English. I made a lot of efforts and took advantage of every single chance to realize my dreams. After years of blood, sweat, and tears, in 2010, I finally earned a college degree and started working as an official teacher of English in a high school in a remote area in Harding Province. And currently, I'm working as a teacher of English at Harding High School for the Gifted. Okay, now that we know who the person is, let's go and find out. In the studio, as always, going into the dark, into the dark. You're here, yes. yes we're here, nice to see you. So nice to see you. Let's let's move back here, because okay. you know, we, we don't have to stand in front. Mm -hmm. Since you're here already, are you ready to face off? Yeah, thank you for hosting me today. Okay, IELTS face off. We're gonna start right now. All right, so today we have a super special guest because her name is Thuy Zung, but I'm not gonna call her Thuy Zung. I'm gonna call her Miss Zung because okay. she yes. is a teacher of so many talented Vietnamese students. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that is really amazing about you and why you fit the theme today so well right, is you know, to, to rise above uh, adversity. Um, yes. You were born in a very small town mm -hmm. in Hà Tinh and you yes. managed to get out. Right, of having to go study. Why were you so interested in English in the first place? I think it's a very long story, but I must say that the first person who introduced me to English uh, is my dad. So uh, when I was 11 years old, my dad brought home a, an English self-study book. Do not, I don't know why, but I was fascinated by the book and I read out loud word by word, even though I didn't know, I did not understand anything at all in the book. And my dad either, he didn't know any English. And then like the journey just went on and I completely fell in love with English. That's the story. Did you ever feel in the past mm -hmm. that you were short, short changed and you were marginalized because you came from a small town? Uh, to be honest, you know, like, inadequate or unfavorable learning conditions may hinder or, I mean, prevent students from uh, developing their communication skills, especially speaking and listening. I'm not an exception. I had to admit that I suffered a lot. But to say that I can't say that I suffered feeling of, you know, self-pityness, no. Meet back to the time and so far, I still keep in mind that uh, we can't decide where we were born, but we can decide who we are. So such a feeling doesn't exist, in, exist inside myself. I just go for it and I strive myself for it and I, I can make it, mm -hmm. yes. Did you ever know you wanted to be a teacher? I think I have a connection with kids. I know why, but whenever I come inside the classroom, I feel completely happy. I believe that whenever the, the door of the classroom is closed, I just leave all the you know, negative feelings outside the classroom. I just want to bring the happiness, the motivation, inspiration, all kind of energy to the classroom to trigger the passions, trigger the, you know, like the energy inside my student. In the classroom, I'm happy all the time like this. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Yes. I want you to be my teacher. <laughs> okay. Are you able to show your students your, your blue nails? 
Is blue a, a good color for the classroom? Blue yeah. and the white chalk, maybe? Yeah, yeah. So, they, you know, like, normally, yeah, in the classroom, I should be the model of my students. Yeah, and I think, like, this is one way to show who I am. <laughs> so it's not so colorful. I think it's still acceptable mm -hmm. in the context of school. Mm -hmm. So and I'm, I think sometimes I'm kind of a weird person and these nails, I made it by myself. <laughs> I change the color often. Maybe yeah. you should just like paint it in a random color and just ask your student, what color is this? Name those colors yeah. in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use terms. it. <laughs> I teach kids, so I say, hey, what color is this? So they I oh, why? Yes, can you see any color? Yeah, here, so they tell this color and that color. Yeah. <laughs> I think the next notch will be like, what fabric is this? Yeah. <laughs> what material is this? <laughs> yeah, I resort to everything in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic, yeah. that's so beautiful. Now, you are also one of those people that had a lot of scholarships. You're, you can be called the scholarship hunter. Mm -hmm. um. So <laughs> you, you got the scholarship from the New Zealand, Australian um, government and also the US government, the Fulbright Scholarship, which you eventually took. So mm -hmm. why fight for so many scholarships? I would say that I would like to go outside of my comfort zone. I would like to see the world outside. And again, uh, I would like to bring what I learned outside to the classroom to talk, to share with my students. Because besides academic knowledge, they deserve to know more about the world outside. And my class is like is vivid. I, I just want to paint my class with different colors. Mm -hmm. And um, I apply for many scholarships, and I have to admit that I failed several times before mm -hmm. winning Fulbright. My story could be motivating to my students. They will know that I can do it, and they can do it better. That's also the reason I want to go, not for myself, but for people around me, for my students, for young generations. Mm. So you want to go for, for everyone, for, for your students. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose the full brand? Okay, maybe you look at this dress, right? It looks awesome, it looks beautiful, but it fits you. It, it may not fit me. So, you know, there are many scholarships outside, and however, I just choose the right one. And when I read about the criteria of Fulbright, I know that this for me. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I put my name for it and, you know, I got it. So what advice do you have for people seeking to get scholarships from Vietnam? I should have three advices for them. Uh, first of all, you have to know which one is fit to you. It means, I, I, as I told you before, choose the right one. Please spend some time reading the guidance of their scholarship to know that whether or not you belong to it. So if you have a sense of belonging to the scholarship, I mean, we'll, okay, maybe you will get it. <laughs> so you put your name on it. And the second is that like scholarship is means like someone offers you the chance to go outside, to gain knowledge, to explore the world and to uh, broaden your horizons. So when you come back, you are expected to return you know, you absorb and you are expected to produce. So just prepare yourself a while about what you're gonna produce. For example, me, when I apply for scholarship, they asked me that, what would you do for the community if you come back? And the pictures, the future I draw out is very clear for them to, to imagine what I can do. It is also the second advice that must be specific with the, with the goals, with the purposes, with what you can do after uh, coming back uh, from scholarship. And the last one should be persistent. Okay, you fell one time, two times, and three times. But again, just question yourself again why you fail and be persistent with that. Don't like quit it immediately because you know, maybe for the four, you, you fail three times, but the fourth time you may get it. So one of the things where I'm, I'm always very curious, why did you decide to come back and especially come back to a school in Hà Tĩnh and not a school in like one of the bigger cities? I decided to go back because I, I really feel sense of happiness and I find myself back home. To me, happiness is happiness and also belonging are the things to decide where I will stay. I go home, I feel that I belong to the place. I can do something for people around me. And also want to go back to trigger the passions in my student. That's it. 
Yeah, I think that's something that we have in common, and, mm -hmm. and I'm super glad because mm -hmm. you know I also decided to come back to Vietnam as well. Oh yes, um, yeah. and of course my story is a little bit long, but yeah, uh, yeah. but I do think uh, there's there's a lot of things to be done here in Vietnam, yeah. and also a lot of possibilities. So because we're so familiar and similar in some ways yeah, to yeah. another, yeah, um, I think we should challenge ourselves to a game. Oh sure, <laughs> shall we do that? <laughs> yes, yes. All okay. right, so let's okay. go. Okay, yes, yeah. Coming right up next is the IELTS Challenge. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. In this week's IELTS Challenge, we're gonna be doing the five seconds rule. Shall we start? Yeah. The five seconds rule is basically, each one of us has five seconds to come, up, to come up with as many vocabulary and words as we can on a certain topic. Okay, I will try. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right, so are we ready? Ready, Okay. Sure. Get set, go. Name the fruits in red color. A chili, a cherry apple. Um, tomatoes, strawberries, uh, the raspberries. Name the Vietnamese snacks. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so, okay, spring roll. I'm gonna answer this in Vietnamese because it's <laughs> Vietnamese. Okay. Bánh tráng, chè. Name the favorite songs. Ước gì, mong ước kỷ niệm xưa. And, uh, uh, okay, so, okay. <laughs> Happy birthday, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Santa Claus is coming to town, Jingle Bell. <laughs> Name the pets. Okay, tiger. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I have a tiger and a pet. Dogs, cats, hamsters, mice, cockroaches, lizards, snakes. <laughs> Name the poultry. Okay, so chicken, uh, okay, duck, and goose. Um, Name the fruits with sections. What? Okay, okay. Pomelo, uh, orange, uh, no. um, bonbons. Um, Name the white flowers. Uh, rose. Uh, uh, time's up. <laughs> Jasmine, lilies, lotuses. All right. So who won? The winner is. Phoebe. Oh. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot for coming by. It's been yeah. such uh, you know, a pleasure to have you here. And, yeah. uh, and I definitely want to speak to you a little bit more about the teaching journey um, in a couple of years. But we definitely always want you back. Yes. And, and good luck. And guys, you guys are so happy yeah. and so lucky to have this person as your teacher. Right, so um, I think that I'm lucky to be their teacher. And thank you for hosting me today. All right, so we're going on to the next section, guys, where you'll be able to see different people perform different abilities and different types of IELTS tests. So stay tuned. Don't go away. Next, on IELTS On The Go, our next stop will be Laksa Province. And here comes two young, talented ethnic students from Laksa Ethnic Boarding High School. Guests will be brave enough to be ready for the real-time speaking test. Is it gonna be tough? We'll see. Let's get to the studio first to meet our IELTS expert of this episode right now. Hey, Tiki, giao hàng ngay. IELTS Face Off Expert Section. We will definitely have our guest. And today our guest is Richard. Welcome back, Richard. Hi, Phoebe. Thanks. Of course. Now, today's topic is on, you know, going against the odds. We actually have a team who's going to go to the different parts of Vietnam to actually see how people speak English, to mm -hmm. see whether they win at the English game or they might need a little bit of improvement with regards to, to the English game. Okay. Shall we take a look? Yes, let's do. All right, IELTS on the go. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Can you guess where I am from this spectacular surrounding? Well, actually, I'm here at Lang Sun Ethnic Boarding High School in this beautiful campus and we have some beautiful greenery in the back and we're joined by some equally beautiful people here. So let's get to know them a little bit. I am uh, Nong Thế Duyệt and I am in grade 10. I'm Chang, I'm in grade 10. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. You didn't say nice to meet me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. You guys are ethnic boarding school students. 
So you guys gotta have a certain kind of ethnicity. I'm King, and you are. I'm uh, Nung. Uh, you're yeah. the Nung. Uh, and Nung. Oh, so you both Nung yes. people. Yeah. You basically know like three languages at the same time. Yes. So like Nung and Vietnamese and English. English. And you manage all three languages so well. Okay, teach me something in Nung. Well, if you want to ask uh, someone uh, where do you go, okay. you can ask Pei Lang. Pei Lang? Yeah. Okay, I is my accent good? Pretty good. Oh, thank you, Pei Lang. Yeah. I'm practically Nung now, anyway. Teach me something else. If you want to say I am at home, okay. you say, say that ngò dù hơn. Ngò dù hơn. Hơn is like house. Yes. yes. Oh man, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting the hang of this thing. Anyway, fantastic. Thank you guys. So you guys both have excellent English. And I know that living in a boarding school, uh, you guys don't really have access to extra classes. So most of the things you learn from English is is at school. Yes. yes. Our teacher is really good. She has good pronunciation. She has study abroad. That explains why you guys have such excellent pronunciation. Um, but any other way that you can improve your English? Um, you said you went to a special class. Yeah. It is provided by America MZ. At that class, uh, the teacher teach me how to pronunciation exactly. And in this class, we also can learn about American culture. Okay, so pronunciation and culture. Yeah. That's the best combination, right? You can't really get behind the language unless you, you sort of understand a little bit about the culture. Yeah. And talking about culture, I know a lot of English learners and our viewers uh, learn through the American culture by movies. So do you guys watch like American movies at all? Yes, I watch. How much time a day do you spend watching movies? Um, about 30 minutes to one hour per day. That's not a lot of time. Uh, why is that? Is it because uh, your boarding school has a very strict curfew? Yes. Okay, so tell me about your curfew. Uh, we have to get up at half past five. Wow. Half past five? Yeah. yeah. Seriously? Yes. So, we so have to do exercise every morning except uh, rain well, is rain. Well, keeps you fit. Yeah. Okay. So you you uh, you get up, you work out a little bit, and then you go to class. Mm. Yeah. You finish at twelve, right? Yeah, at twelve. And do you get a break? Have lunch. Okay. And get a break, and then we go to school again in afternoon. What time do you finish studying? Nine. Half past eleven. Wow. Half past eleven? Yeah. And you wake up at five thirty? Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's intense. I, I don't know about you guys, but you know, my schedule is a little bit less rigorous. <laughs> anyway, so you don't have a lot of time uh, watching movies either, but you make the best of it, right? You try to uh, listen to what the characters say and copy the pronunciation, which is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, so you guys are in grade 10. Yeah. And soon you are going to be a senior in high school, and you're going to face the choice, higher education. Right, you can go abroad, you can study in Vietnam. Uh, what do you plan to do with your life? After I leave high school, I will go to study abroad. Okay, and what are you going to study? I will study medicine. Medicine, so you want to become a doctor? Yeah. And will you come back after you've earned your degree? Yeah, I will come back. And marry this guy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no, or you're just friends. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm getting the just wrong friends. vibe here. <laughs> Sorry about that. And obviously, when you study in college, whether in Vietnam or in another country, you gotta take the IELTS, all right? And it's, now, it's now the norm to take the IELTS. And the IELTS has four skills, uh, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. So usually with IELTS on the go, we're going to give the guests an opportunity to practice their speaking skill. But I cannot give you guys both a chance to go into the simulation test room. There can only be one person. So how are you going to decide among yourselves? Mm, yeah. Yeah, me. What? You're you just going to take it? <laughs> <laughs> you're so generous, Chang. You're so generous. OK, Zuit. Yeah. You ready to take this chance? Yes, I'm ready. Bye. OK. Best of luck. This is your first time, right? Yeah. Don't worry. It's not as intimidating as it sounds. So the exam room is just right this way. Let's go ahead, young man. Well known to Zuit. We're definitely going to be able to see him perform on the aisle. So, Richard, are you ready to face off? 
Yes, let's do it. Voice of this week, we have your name, Nong Thế Duyệt. We are all so excited for your performance in the speaking test room. Will you survive in the face-off with our IELTS expert? Oh yeah, our brand new IELTS expert, Richard Cherry, will be at your disposal with plenty of tips for your IELTS conquest. How to take advantage of the transcript will be the very useful tip to improve your listening. And in the brand new segment, Book of the Week, we'll bring you the book titled Common Mistakes at IELTS Intermediate. Don't go anywhere, since the best part of the show comes to you right now. Hello, my name is Richard. Can you tell me your name, please? My name is Nong Thế Okay, thank you. Now let's move into part one. Uh, what place do you most like to visit? Uh, the place I most like to visit is Hạ Long Bay because it's not far from my home and I love the sea. Caves and beaches, they are also very beautiful. Let's move into part two. I'd like you to describe a competition, for example, a talent show, uh, that you would like to take part in. Before you speak, you have one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make notes if you wish. I have attended many different kinds of competition and have won some prize as well. And today I will talking about English, an English speaking contest. In this competition, my team and I have to take part in four activities. Uh, reading, speech, describe pictures, and exchange. We have prepared a lot, so we won the first prize. My team and I were really excited. By taking part in this competition, students can improve their speaking and listening skills as well. In my opinion, this competition is a chance for students to exchange experience learning English with each other. I hope there will be more competitions like this to give more chances for students to learning and speaking English. Thank you very much. Let's move on to part three. Why do you think some school teachers use competitions as class activities? Uh, I think they want their students to communicate with each other and have more creativity and inspiration in their study. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, there's our guy. Hi. How was it? It's a bit difficult for me. Oh, it's a bit <laughs> difficult because you're kind of unfamiliar with the, with the format? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to see what the examiner has to say about your performance. Yes. So Richard, what do you think of Zuyet's performance? Well, it was certainly an interesting performance. So one thing that was noticeable about Zuyet's performance was his pronunciation. So his pronunciation was in many ways characteristic of uh, uh, an English user of a you know, slightly less proficiency, let's say. Uh, you know, some slippery terminal consonant sounds, you know, like visis. That's why I visis every summer. Mm. Um, but conversely, the other thing about his performance was that the content was kind of almost perfect. Okay, so thank you guys for a very lovely time here today. I've learned a lot about you know, what students in the boarding school do and how you guys manage to, you know, study English so well. And to reciprocate, I have some gifts here for you. And uh, this is a bag from the British Council. Here Thank it goes. You. Each one of you get one. So nice. I envy you. That's a nice bag. Anyway, yeah. and we have some gifts from VTV7 as well. So thank you guys a lot. Thank you. All right, here you go. Thank you. Fantastic. All right, viewers, uh, we're going to be back with some more tips, 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 and tips. So don't go anywhere. Keep it locked.
This week on IELTS Face Off Tips, 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 and Tips section, we're going to be talking about some listening skills. And today we're talking about making use of the transcript. So, Richard, do you have any advice for that? Um, yeah, well, I mean, under normal circumstances, I think the transcript is probably one of the last things that you should look at um, in a regular uh, speaking activity. Um, but it can be one of the first if you're intending to use a listening text to develop pronunciation. Um, there are a lot of other uh, tasks that you can do with listening and with their transcripts. Um, I think it can be pretty useful to take a look at a listening text and before listening, write down your own questions about what, uh, what questions you think the text may answer to give you more reason for listening. It can also be very useful to get a study buddy and then uh, give that partner some questions about the listening text so that you have uh, a more in-depth comprehension of it. And of course, don't limit yourself only to IELTS listening scripts, you know. Uh, it's important to listen to things that are of interest to you and that you enjoy from time to time as well. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Every episode, you know, on IELTS Face Off, we always want our guests to share with our audience their favorite idiom. So what's your favorite idiom? Well, idioms, you know, I mean, um, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I have a different view on idioms that I think a lot of um, IELTS preparation teachers might have. Uh -huh. um, I think idioms come up in uh, IELTS exams and uh, they can be very difficult to manage sometimes. If, if they go slightly wrong, they can sound a little strange. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's not unusual to sit in exams and people will say, if it's raining, of course, it's raining cats and dogs. And, you know, it, when asked to, to speak about an episode from their past, they will say, well, when I was knee high to a grasshopper. <laughs> um, and so, yes, yeah, some, some, some idioms can get a little cliche, I find. Yes. You know, it would be difficult for me to identify one that I like. All right. Well, thanks, Richard. And of course, guys, every week we will bring you the book suggestion, book of the week. And here is our book of the week suggestion this week. Take a look. Common grammatical and lexical errors based on analysis of thousands of IELTS exam scripts. This book has 30 common errors and 10 tests. One test offers three common errors to test your understanding. Each common error is only one page with an explanation and short practice activities. This episode is really meaningful to me because I, I really think, you know, Zoom has been able to achieve many things in the education sphere. I think we can definitely be good friends. She's an example of somebody who's really been able to rise above her means. Adversities happen to all of us, but I think we can all, you know, uh, rise above it and we should be able to overcome our fears and obstacles. So until next time, we'll see you again. Ciao, ciao, ciao.